by Magical Friends, I'm Cal Mingo! Now in today's video, I'm gonna be doing an in-depth tutorial on how to get started in Overworld Bay! But before I get into that, if you can do me a quick favor, make sure that you're subscribed and if you liked the video, that would mean the world to me. But let's go ahead and get started! So in this video, I'm gonna be doing a super in-depth tutorial on everything in the game. From how to get gems, how to get pets, building locations, and how the GUI work. Basically everything you need to know in order to get started in the game. So let's go ahead and get started. And as you can see, I am currently inside the house. That is a slightly bit more decorated version of the default house that a normal player is gonna start in. And it's normally gonna be empty. Now there is an in-game tutorial that kinda takes you through some of the basic stuff, like the inventory and how to get pets and stuff like that. And I highly recommend doing that tutorial if we still have access to it. But let's start off with the GUI. Now this GUI at the top center of your screen only appears inside of your own house. Now starting from the left, the first button is the decorate button. So when you open this button up, it'll change all the buttons on top where the first one is the flooring. So if you click on one of these, it'll change the flooring color and they have all the prices underneath. The next one is the walls, which is the exact same thing, exact same papers, except for on the wall. And next to that is all the furniture in the game. Ranging from stuff for your living room, to your pet stuff, and even holiday stuff. Like Christmas and Halloween. Now if you have the money, I highly recommend going into the pet section and buying one bathtub, one food bowl, and mainly the dual pet bowl because it does both food and water for free, and the bed for pet tasks, which I will be explaining in a moment too. And for the last button, we do have the button or to close the menu. Now, when you are in the menu too, you are able to move furniture by clicking on it. And you have very similar buttons when you click on every piece of furniture, like a bed or even like a normal brick. Now, the next item is your house menu. Now, this has all of the houses that you own in the game. And also, you can buy new houses here too. And they're always adding new houses to the game too, which is super exciting. You can also sell houses here in case you have a house you don't want anymore. And you can also change out houses here, so I can go ahead and like spawn in my egg cottage instead. Now the button next to that is the lock button, which makes it where only your friends can enter your house or everyone can enter your house. So if you're in a public server and don't want a bunch of people walking into your house, you can just go ahead and lock it too. It is super handy. Now moving on to the next area, in the top right corner of your screen, you have two different GUIs. The big white one with the green plus and the number is your money. Now this currently shows all of the gems that you currently have in the game and if you press the green button you can buy more gems. You can even earn gems from various different tasks around the game, which I will also be explaining in a moment. Now above that you have your current player level. Now the player levels range from level 1 all the way to level 50. And you can get, and you can get experience from various different tasks, from doing like daily tasks, pet tasks, and a whole bunch more. Now moving on to the next menu, we have the bottom center of your screen is your inventory and your personal vehicle button. Now the personal vehicle button just equips the most recent personal vehicle that you've used in the game. So as you can see, I have this hoverboard right now, but in a moment I will be changing this out to another, to another personal vehicle soon. Now if you click on your inventory button, this will open up your inventory, obviously. Now let's go over all the different buttons. Now the first one is your pets menu. This will have every single pet that you own in the game, ranging from commons to the super rare mythic pets. Now the next one is collectibles. Now this is reserved for a bunch of different types of items that do not specifically fit in different categories. So here we have like a bunch of plushes from Christmas to fireworks to even a bunch of Halloween items. So the thing of this is like event items or even toys menu. Now the next menu is the foods menu. Now this can range from normal food that you feed your pet to a legendary experience food. They can also feed your pet in order to get free pet experience. Now our next menu is the vehicles menu. Now this vehicle can range from normal vehicles which are a bit harder to drive and act more like normal vehicles to personal vehicles which act almost like a sprint key and make it go super fast. Now personal vehicles are going to be spawned indoors and normal vehicles like the egg cart or the hunk of junk can only be spawned outside of buildings. So you can't just spawn like a speed racer right in the middle of the pet shop. And also, like I said earlier, whatever's the most recent personal vehicle that you've equipped is the one that'll show up on the bottom. So now, as you can see, I now have this lavender scooter as my personal vehicle button instead of my hoverboard. Now, our next inventory is the tools menu. 
Now in this video, we're gonna be starting off with a basic baby blue shovel, a baby blue pickaxe, and a baby blue rod. Now you can't unlock and buy more later, which yet again, I will be explaining that in a minute. You can also find some shiny potions that I don't really own right now that you can use in order to make your pets shiny or rainbow shiny. And if you're coming from a dot meat, it's basically neon and mega neon. That requires a lot less pets to do. Now for our last menu, we have the collectibles menu. Now this menu is basically stuff that you've collected that you can sell. Now the stuff in this menu can be ranging from fish, to artifacts, to even seashells, or even crystals you can get from mining. And you can sell all those to the respective shop. But it's generally your entire inventory. Now, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be changing this DUI later, but from the leak we've seen of it, it's gonna be roughly the same thing. Then, moving on to our last bit of DUI, which is on the right side of your screen. Now, starting from the top, we have the Robux shop. Now, in this minute, you have like, all the Robux things you can buy. Like in the top area, you have all the game passes you can buy. You have another route to the gem buying area. And next to that, you have the exclusive pets, which is all of the current Robux pets in the game. And there's normally not a lot, because these Robux pets get retired quite a bit. None of the original Robux pets are in the game anymore. And below that, you have all the Star Creator codes from Megan all the way on the Kristen, too. Now, moving on to the next menu, you have your clothing menu. Now, this is all your, like, your saved outfits that you've made in-game. And on the other side, you have all of your different hat menus. Now, below that, you have your friends menu. Now, this has all of your current friends on Roblox. And if they are in game, the invite button will be a teleport button, so that way you can teleport to your friends anywhere on the map. Now next to that, you do have the nearby button, and at the top of this menu, you have all of your current friends are in the server, and everyone below that will be everyone else in the server. Now I'm currently in a VIP server, so there's no one else in here. But you can friend people from this menu, or even teleport to your friends here too, so that's super exciting. Now below that, you have your fast travel menu with four different teleports. You have your home teleport, which teleports you to your home. City teleport, which teleports you to the center of the game. Next to that, you have the mine teleport, which teleports you to the mines that I was talking about earlier. And next to that, you have the post office teleport, which teleports you to your post office where you can get mail from. Then moving on to our next menu, we have the tasks menu. Now these are tasks on the daily menu that will reset every 24 hours. And these tasks range from just playing the game for 30 minutes, to fishing or mining, to even making a shiny pen at the pet shop. And also the other one is the weekly tasks, which are a bit harder to do, but they reset every single week, as you can see, it's a much longer timer. Now these tasks are a bit harder and take a lot more time to do, but they give a bunch more gems. Now that is all the GUI in the game. Now there is technically one more GUI, and that's when, when you equip a pet, roughly around here, pet tasks will pop up. Going from feeding your pet, to giving your pet a bath, to even going to the movie theater or the park. Which I will be showing all of those special locations in a moment. Now let's go ahead and teleport to the city. And here we go, we are now in the default city inside of Overlook Bay. And as you can see, there is quite a bit going on. But do not worry, I will try my best to explain every single thing that's going on here. Now we're spawned right next to the news board. Now this will display everything that happened in the most recent up inside the game. Now I'm not gonna read anything on this board because it's always changing and it will look different for you. But right now the Metaverse event is going on in game, which is super exciting. It's a really fun event. And moving over here, you have the map of the game. Now, because I know a lot of people aren't too good at following maps, but think of it this way. We are right here, and we are facing towards the car dealership right there. So, for example, right here it says Pet Shop, and the Pet Shop building is right there. The Overlook Bay Station is right there, and the car dealership is right behind it. And as you can see right there, it says the park, so the park is right over there behind the group rewards. The beach is right there, which is over that way facing the direction of the news board. And the movie theater and Rick Rolls is facing that way. Almost towards the wishing well. Now I know for news players, those locations kinda got over your head, but those are some of the most important locations in the game. But don't get me wrong, every single location here is super special. Now let's go ahead and get started by going to the pet shop. Now, the pet shop is one of the most important buildings in the entire game because this is where you can get pets and where you can make them into rainbow shiny. Now, let's go ahead and get started by going this direction. Now, this room is the pet pod battling room. Now, the pet pods are like the default pet things. You open pet pods or to get pets. 
And this is a little pet battle area if you want like 1v1 someone like opening a bronze pet pod, whoever gives the better pet wins. So if you unlock a common and your enemy unlocks an uncommon, the enemy wins. Now this is entirely based on roleplay, so there's no base reward for opening a better pet other than actually getting the pet. Now walking out of this room to the right is the shiny machine. Now how this works is if you, if you press E on the different areas, you can put in two of the exact same types of pets. Now make sure they are max level. You do have to be max level or put them in there. And if you put two of the exact same pet in the machine and press E on this middle thing, you can make them into a shiny pet. Now you will also need to buy a shiny potion from Emma right here, which is 500 gems. And they do get used up every single shiny pet you make. So every single shiny pet will require 500 gems. But don't worry, you'll make way more than that by maxing them out. And moving on to the middle of the room, we have the exclusive Robux pets. Now this will show all of the current Robux pets that are currently in the game and the times two pet leveling game pass, which I highly recommend buying if you have the Robux. It's so helpful. Now moving on to that, we have the pet exchange menu. Now I personally stay super far away from this thing because I don't want to accidentally scrap one of my rainbow shiny pets which are super hard to get. They take a lot of time. But you can turn in different rarities of pets all the way from common to mythical for pet tokens. Now you can use these pet tokens on the pet wheel across the way and it takes one or pet tokens in order to spin. And every time you spin, you can get different rewards from gems to an exclusive Thunderbolt pet, to wishes, to use the wishing well, to even die. Which does give a badge, which so it's not too useless. But let's go and see what we get for spinning it. And I think see, I also got experience in that too. I got 25 experience for, paying, for spinning the wheel, which you can get every single time. And I think see, I got 100 gems for spinning the wheel. That's super exciting. I even completed a daily task for doing that also. You can also see how many pet tokens you have right below your gem amount. And as you can see, I have a bunch of pet tokens right now. Now, right next to that, you have your pet collection board. This will show every single pet in the game. Of course, most of them will be blackened out if you're brand new to the game. But this will show every single pet that you currently have. Now, as you can see, I have all 108 out of 108 pets in the game. So none of them are blackened out. Now, do keep in mind, most of these pets are not in the game anymore. So you will have to trade for most of these pets. Now moving on, we have the pet care area. Now in the middle, we do have this NPC named Bree, and they will sell you a bunch of pet food. From pet treats to even a bunch of milk, too. And you can feed these and give these to your pets for certain pet tasks, like if your pet's hungry or thirsty. Now, speaking of pet tasks, this is one of the main places where we can get pet tasks done. Now here, you can get your bath, bathing task done, and your sitting task. Now, as you can see at the top of the screen, I do have a sleeping task. Which means my pet does want to take a nap right now. Then go ahead and click E on any of the beds in here. Now you can also spawn in beds in your house like I recommended earlier. It's super helpful. And as you can see, slowly the green bar will fill up. And when that green bar gets fully filled up, your pet will gain experience. Now as you can see, that task is going to get 15 experience and 10 gems. Now I got 10 gems, but I got 30 experience because I do own the times to pet tasks. Now there's a bunch of other pet tasks that like go into the movie theater or play fetch and stuff like that. Now if you do want to like feed your pet or give your, or like play fetch or even pick up your pet, you can go ahead and click on your pet, which will pop up four buttons. The first one is one, which will pick up your pet, which if you are mobile, there is going to be a bottom button that will pop up in order to drop the pet. But if you are on PC, all you got to do is press R. And for the second button, we have play fetch. Now this one will give you a red ball in your hand. And when you throw it, your pet can go fetch it too. Which is also one of the tasks on the top bar, which is super exciting. It's a really easy experience. Now the next one is your name button, which you can use to name your pet anything you want. And for the last one, we have the feed task. Now luckily, I do have a water feeding task right now. So I can take any of the drinks in inventory and click on it. It'll automatically feed it to my pet. And as you can see, as it drinks, it just looks so adorable. And there we go. The task is now done. And now my pet is a little bit higher level and have more gems now. Now moving on to the next area inside the pet shop is the pet pod area. Now there are four different default pet pods in the game. There's the bronze pet pod, silver pet pod, gold pet pod, and diamond pet pod. Now the price does keep going up in every single pet pod, but the chances to get better pets goes even higher too. So I think you see to get a godly item of bronze is a 0.5% chance, as 
a silver is a 1% chance, a gold is a 2% chance, and the diamond is a 6 You can also buy these pet pots from Tyson right here. And you can also bulk buy here. So if you want to buy like a ton of diamond pet pots without having to wait for it, the machine to load every single time, you can go ahead and just buy a bunch here. Now, if you do buy any, they can be found inside of your pet menu. So if I type in pot in this menu, it'll have, it'll have all my pet pots that I have in the game. But I do have a bunch of normal ones too, and I'll go ahead and just open up one of the silver ones real quick. And if you want to open them up, all you gotta do, all you gotta do is click on it in your inventory, go ahead and close it, and then click. And it'll already open the pet, no tasks required. And let's see what we get, come on, I'll give us something good! And we got a piggy pet, awesome! That's actually really adorable. The piggy pet's so cute. But as you can see, we just got an uncommon pig pet, that is so exciting! But that is the entire pet shop, probably the most important building in the entire game. But this isn't the only shop in the game too, there are a couple more shops to go look at. And the next one from the pet shop is gonna be straight ahead. And it's right in front of the grocery store, which you can see right here. And the shop, which I find super important, is the organic offer. Now I'm not gonna go over all of the different tree locations to get the fruits. I do have a specialized video just for that I made a long time ago. All the locations are still true, by the way. But if you talk to Clyde right here, you can sell to him and shop from him. Now if you do sell from him, you can go ahead and sell various different fruits to him. Now I don't have any currently right here, but they can be picked from various different pink trees around the map. And again, I do have a video for it. It will be the top one in the description or the title card right above on the top of the screen. You can also buy seeds from him ranging from the apple seeds all the way up to the peach seeds. Now I highly recommend saving for the peach trees. It's really, really worth it long term. You can make so many gems per day. I'm not going to show you how you plant them because yet again it is in that other video. So if you want to know more about these trees, definitely go watch that video. It's super helpful. I, just, I make most of my gems from these trees. But let's go ahead and go to our next shop. Now I'm going to go ahead and just cover the city even though we're right next to there just to make it a little bit more easy to follow. But going from the map at the city place, we're going to be going to the car dealership and the personal vehicle dealership. Now that is literally just straight ahead, so just follow where I go real quick. And here we go, we are now at the car dealership. Now this shop isn't too special, but if you walk up to these three different cars, you can buy these cars for 1,500 gems, 700 gems, and 2,500 gems. Now that's all this building really is, it isn't too much more to this building, but moving on to the next building, which is the personal dealership, which is right behind the design car dealership side right here is the personal vehicle shop. Now this also has a board showing off every single personal vehicle in the game and there are a ton of them, but this works roughly the same as the pet shop. There are three different crates. There's the bronze crate, the gold crate, and the silver crate. So it goes from bronze, silver, all the way up to gold. Now these can give you various different vehicles in the game and do keep in mind that most of the vehicles are not in the game anymore, but there are still a lot of vehicles that you can get including this really cool hoverboard, which is probably the rarest hoverboard of the entire game. But it's super rare, trust me. You might get super lucky though. But you can buy these vehicle crates in order to open your own vehicles. You can also talk to Flint here in order to both buy them, just like in the pet shop. You can also go inside of the personal vehicle shop, which has the exact same setup with the NPC, and the personal vehicle board right here too, which shows every single personal vehicle in the game. Now that is all the baseline shops in the game. Now there are a bunch of other shops in the game too that all sell food, so you can go to the gym, Coastal Cup, Honey's Diner, Movie Theater, Roller Ricks, Grocery Store, etc. There are so many different places you can go. But let's go to go to the places that aren't necessary shops, but super important. And then moving on to the special location, just following the path I'm taking right now, is the Wishing Well. Now the Wishing Well, if you can I highly recommend locking on every single day and do the one roll because every single day you do get a free wishing roll. Now sadly I did already do today so I can't exactly do my free one right now. But as you can see I get my next free wish in 10 hours and 50 minutes. You could also buy ad additional wishes here too. And as you can see I do have a big stockpile of wishes too that I save up whenever they release special pets inside the wishing well. But I'm getting ahead of myself right now. Let's go and talk about all the rewards you can get out of the Wishing Well. The show that is truly super powerful. So the smallest rewards you can get range from 50 gems to 100 gems. And this is like the default rewards that aren't too exciting. Now below that we have the Bronze Pet Pod, the Silver Pet Pod, Gold Pet Pod, and the Diamond Pet Pod. Which are basically free pets. 
which are super exciting to get. And below that, we have the Pan Giraffe, which is a super rare pet. Now, this will probably be different if playing this down the line, but this is what's known as a Wishing Well pet. Now, there's been a quite a bit of Wishing Well pets, like the, like the Banana Cow, Lucky Cow, Pan Giraffe, even the Cupid Teddy, which are all some of the most adorable pets in the game. Now, these are super rare to get. And honestly, some of the rarest pets in the game when they're in the game. Now, there is one more thing you should know about the Wishing Well. There is a special mythic pet in the game called a Celebration Dragon. Now, these dragons, I don't remember the percentages exactly, increase the luck for pet pods and Wishing Well pets. So, Shiny's lowest percentage help, Shiny's the next percentage, and Rainbow Shiny is the highest percentage you can get. But let's go ahead and teleport to the city real quick. So I'm going to talk to you about pet task locations. Now there are a couple of these in the game, ranging from the park, to the beach, to roller ricks, to the movie theater. Now these tasks will pop up on the top of your screen. Now the park is located right over here, as you can see from the Overlook Bay Park sign right there. The beach is located this direction. What was left over is the roller ricks and the movie theater. Now, these are normally the ones, most of the ones that new players don't know. But if you want to do it, just face towards the Overlook Bay news sign and head left. And just keep following me down those paths right here. Now, here we go. Here is Roller Ricks right here. And the movie theater is right next to it. Now, another quick little tip is if you go to your fast travel menu and teleport to the mail area, you will be put right next to the movie theater and Roller Rick. So if you're not too good at knowing locations from any location, just go ahead and teleport to that place and it'll put you right next to all those tasks. Now that definitely covers all of the pet tasks, which is probably one of the best ways to make gems. Now there is only one more thing I want to go over in this video, and that is mining and fishing. Now I'm guessing let's go ahead and get started with mining. Now, if you head to the mine area, just go ahead and go to the fast travel menu and teleport to the mine. Now, once you teleport here, just go ahead and walk inside. And when you're here, or really anywhere in the map, you can go ahead and open up your inventory and equip any of the tools in the game. Now, if you do want to mine your own crystals, all you gotta do is find these crystals all around the mining area. Break them and every single hit will take a chunk of health off. Now, when you break a crystal, you'll gain mining experience and you can pick up the crystal which will give player experience and the crystal ore to sell. Now, mining and fishing both have a level system ranging from level 1 all the way to level 50. I know, I know it says 51, but that is a bug. But if you do level up, there are different rewards from different passes. Mining and fishing both have their own passes. They're both basically the exact same thing. Now, I'm not going to describe every single reward because it's basically kind of obvious if you recognize all the symbols. But at level 50 for both the mining and fishing, you will be able to gain the alicorn tools. Now, for mining, there is the alicorn pickaxe, and for fishing, there is the alicorn fishing rod, which can only be acquired by trading or by hitting level 50. Now, the other shop in the mining area is the Crystal Cravity, where you can sell the crystals for various different prices, just like the fruits, or you can buy pickaxes here. Now, there is one thing I'm going to be adding very soon to the game, too, that's probably going to be in-game if you're watching this later down the line, which is going to be called Molten Mines, which I'm pretty sure is going to be roughly right here. And if I know correctly, you only have level 50 mine to access this, so you definitely want to get that done if you want to participate down there. Now, obviously, it's not in the game right now, but when it is, I will be making videos on the new mine area, which is going to be super exciting. But let's go ahead and go talk about fishing. Now, I honestly don't need to leave the mining area because there is a fishing spot in the mining area resulting in this lake. Now, fishing can be done anywhere in the map in any of the lakes or rivers in the map or even the ocean. And all you gotta do is get out any of the fishing rods in your inventory and you just go ahead and click on the water and wait for a fish to bite. And it's biting. And there we go. And if you want to fish, just go ahead and land the yellow dot in the middle green area. And you will fish up a random fish from the different area. Now before I get started about the different areas, let's go ahead and go to the beach area real quick. Oh, and also something I forgot to mention, if you do have an area task at the beach or park, you can click on it. And it'll give you a golden area above your head pointing to where you need to go, which is just an extra bit of help. So do keep that in mind in case you're lost or look for those tasks. But here we are, we are at the beach. And I gotta do this fast so I don't miss out on the boat. But if you go down this dock, there is a boat that will circle around. There's two boats, actually. There's the green one, 
and the purple one. Oh man, I missed it. Okay, we gotta, we gotta go back now. But in Super Boats, there's the green one and the purple one. They both do the exact same thing. They just loop around each other. And the reason why you want to take the boats is because if you go into the water, it'll start playing some music. And that's actually warning you of a shark that's hunting you. Now, the sharks are impossible to dodge because it just spawns in. So it's not like an AI that's coming towards you. So definitely do not go to the water or you will die. It's like one of the only ways to die in the game. But here's the boat. Let's go in and get on and ride it all the way up to the fishing island real quick. And here we go. We are now at the fishing island. Now the first building, of course, is the fishing pass area, which has the exact same rewards as the mining area, except it has the alicorn fishing rod instead. Now walking up onto the island, we do have the fishing shop. Now inside the shop is Marlin Barnacle. Now when you're inside the shop, you can sell seashells and find around the map, mainly on the beaches. There is a fish collection board which shows all the different fish in the game from the lake, ocean, and river, which I'll be explaining in a second. And there's Marlin Barnacle, where you can sell your fish to, as you can see right here. You can also sell your seashells here, of course. So there you guys, just from selling all of this, we just went ahead and made 267 gems. Awesome! That was pretty easy. You can also buy the various different fishing rods here, exactly like the mining area, too. Now, how the different areas work is the lake, river, and ocean all have different types of fish and special fish. Not only that, but they have different fish during the day and during the night. So if you fish in the lake during the day, you can get a dad, you get a tadpole common fish, but during the night you get a shadow fish. And it works the exact same down the entire line. So the goldies during the day is the koi, and during the night is the giant snakehead fish for 10 gems per. Every single area has their own set of fish too. And there we go, that is generally how you get started inside of Overworld Bay. Now, I didn't go over every single thing in the game, like I didn't go over seashells or artifacts, stuff like that. But I went over all the basic things that were to get started in the game. Now, I know this is a bit long of a video, but there's just so much cool stuff to do in this game. But do let me know in the comments, if you have any questions, like if you have anything I missed, or anything you want me to clarify on, do let me know down in the comments. But yeah, again, if you have any questions, just let me know down in the comments. Thanks for being here, and I'll see you all next time. Goodbye!